Hey everyone, um, I'm going to talk kind of fast because there's a lot to go through and more to be added. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about getting your driver's license the easy way. Uh, Gail is in the process right now. It's a multiple step, it's multiple steps, and so we don't, so we don't forget everything. This video will be from multiple different days. Uh, I'm going to explain the process, and then Gail will talk about what actually happened. I wanted to do this video for you because I only found a few blog posts and one YouTube video on how to go through this easy process. Uh, so here is what I found out. As of today, this is the process. It could change tomorrow. Just letting you all know. <laughs> so first step is to get your residency. You can't get a driver's license in Panama without it. If you are still, if you're just traveling, your license is good, I believe, still for 90 days. Uh, with your home country driver's license. Uh, the, the day you get your temporary residency card, that license is no longer valid in Panama. Uh, you can then apply for a Panama driver's license. Uh, keep in mind, if getting a license with a temporary residency, your license is only good as long as a temporary residency is good. So make sure to notice the expiration date they put on your license, on that first license that you get. And this can all be done on the searches and website. I'll include the link below. Once you get your e cedula, everything has to ch be changed over to your cedula number, your license, your car registration, and insurance. For this process, I've heard you can you can wait until your car registration is due, which is every year. I've I haven't gone through that process yet, so more to come on that possibly. Uh, the second step is to make an appointment with your embassy. I'll include the U.S. Embassy links below. For the U.S. right now, they are about a month or so out with appointments. If you're from somewhere else, you may be able to get in next week. Uh, here you will get your driver's license certified by completing a notarized affidavit of your driving history. You are charged $100, which is $50 per signature for this service, which includes a public notary to authenticate the signatures on the affidavit. You need to bring your valid passport and driver's license. I also sent Gail with a couple copies of those, so just to be prepared. I'm not sure if he needed them or not, but uh, the next step is to go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Panama City, where they will validate your certified driver's license. Make sure to bring all the documents to receive from the embassy. Uh, when you get there, they will ask you to go to the bank that is nearby and place $5 in their account for the services. You will then need to bring that receipt as well. Um, now this is where I got confused. Nowhere did I see that you're required to make an appointment with the ministry. Uh, however, I had a friend that went through the process a month before and she needed an appointment. I also went on their website and it states that there is a form to fill out before you go and it, but you can't fill out the form until you have the documents from the embassy. I have also talked to someone else from Canada who stated that they went to their embassy and had to go back to get the papers a couple days later and had to do the same with the ministry. So these steps could all happen in the same day. It's very confusing. <laughs> I'm going to step there with that process and let Gail explain what he did because it's completely different on what we, what I've read and what I've heard. Um, before I let him talk, there is one more step you need to do before you go to search Zone to get your actual license, which is getting your blood type. If it's not on your home country license already, you have to go to visit a medical lab certified by Panama's Land Traffic and Transportation Authority in order to provide the results of your blood type test. It's very easy, just make an appointment and go in and the next day we receive the results. And, uh, so that needs to be done as well. Um, if you happen to be over the age of 70 as well, you will need a doctor's certification to show you are fit enough to drive a car in addition to the steps above as well. So here is Gail and he will talk about the process that he went through for the first few steps. Hey, um, 
Tiff had asked me to create a video to explain how I went through the driving process, of, well, the driver's license process to be able to get my driver's license. Starting the process involves a lot of time just looking at the embassy website to try to figure out what day is going to open up for you. I randomly went on one day and they had opened up slots for April, May, and June. So luckily I was able to find one that fit, coordinated with what um, would work for our schedule. Well, we took the bus into the Panama City from Coronado. We woke up that morning and um, I took an Uber to the embassy. Uh, it was like five dollars, something super cheap, from the Albrecht Mall. We always get the hotel at the Albrecht Mall, just if we're going to be popping around town doing things. It's really convenient for the accessing the bus when you got backpacks and stuff. So, um, so got there, dropped me off, um, and there's a long line. Uh, it was I was like 15, 20 minutes early for my appointment. And it was there's a really long line uh, to get up to the in, inside the gates of the embassy. Um, the line said something about visa. I, I don't know Spanish, so I, I couldn't tell what it was. And I didn't know if this was a line for Panamanians to get into the embassy to get their visa to maybe go to the States or do something. Or if this was like the line, or if I could like jump in front of everybody and just be like, I'm an American citizen, I have an appointment, see you later. Uh, so I just waited in line. I had all the day to do it. So, But that would be something interesting if anybody actually knows about it. If you can jump the, the whole line or or if you have to wait. I waited in line for like a half hour. It was, it was a long time. I was a little concerned about missing my appointment. But I don't think really they expect you to be exactly on time for your appointment. Who knows? Um, wear comfortable shoes because, uh, as I mentioned, you wait in line. But then right after that, you walk you know, eighth to a quarter of a mile up a decent inclined hill to get to the for, to get to the security, the second set of security. Uh, you walk through those doors, and they have the uh, um, the metal detectors, and they make you drain the stuff from your pockets like you're going through TSA. And then anything that's not pretty much your wallet, they want you to keep in a, a bin, and they give you a little card for your to get your stuff back out. You can't bring your cell phone up there for whatever reason. They want me to put my keys and my gun gum up there or in there. So whatever, all I need is my was my wallet. So I made my way into the to the actual building. And the counter that I was directed to go to is the building that was on the, like the first building on the right, counter on the left once you get inside the building. So I went and waited in line there on that, at that counter. And at that counter, they gave me a piece of paper. I had to fill out all my information, um, like my passport number, my driver's license, my current driver's license number, cedula. Um, make sure you fill that out right the first time. Um, I had screwed up my the, the pen kind of jumped when I was writing my birth date, and so I crossed it out, rewrote it, waited in line. The guy's like, nope, here's another form. So be careful when you're doing that one. Finally, I finally was able to get give him a good copy of it. Um, they all the, the people that I interacted with, um, they all spoke really good English, which was great. I gave the guy uh, the 100 bucks. Apparently, it used to only be 50 bucks, but then they realized that they are putting two signatures on the one piece of paper, so they charge you out 50 bucks a signature. American prices, you gotta love it. So yeah, I sat down uh, after the first step and I waited for this other countertop to open. It opened after about 15, 20 minutes. And they call people's names and they go through the process. There's only one guy writing a signature. Um, so once I got up there, uh, he signed the forms, verified the forms. I asked him if, if that line at the bottom of the security could be jumped if you're just an American citizen. He said he had no idea. Um, I also asked him if I could do the second part of this process, which is verifying your your license, basically. That you have gone through this first step. You have to go down to this um, tribunal place um, to do like the second step where they actually sign off that you've gone through the embassy and everything's good for the third step which is when you actually go get your driver's license so i he said you, could, you don't really need an appointment you can probably just walk in so on the way back down the hill i called tiff and i'm like hey i'm going to jump in another uber and i'm going to head to the tribunal place and maybe i can kill two birds with one stone while i'm in the city otherwise we would have to schedule yet another time to come back to the city 
and go through the tribunal process after making an appointment. So my Uber drops me off. He tells me exactly where it is. It's like, it's, it, it dropped me off on this little corner thing. It was like two, two businesses down, worked out great. There's people waiting outside. So you could kind of tell that it was probably something official like that. I went to the front thing and there was a gentleman at the door who didn't speak English, but we were able to kind of get a little bit of communication and he pulled me inside and, and brought me to an English speaking counter. And that man, that gentleman told me that I needed to go down maybe to eight businesses to basically um, pay a fee for, for what they're about to approve. It was like $5 or something like that. I think it was like, I think the fee is like three, but them, them doing the process was like another $2 at this other building. So walked down there, got that, got that portion done, gave me a little receipt. I came back to um, the tribunal place, got in line. It was probably maybe, I don't know, 20 people deep. 1520. So that was a pretty long wait. Um, then I finally got to the countertop or front front counter and through Google messaging and talking with the woman who didn't speak English, we were able to de determine that she was asking me if I had a, a reservation. I thought she was saying receipt, so I'm giving her the receipt from the embassy, I'm giving her the receipt from the people downtown or down, down eight stores or businesses and finally figured out she was asking me if I had a, an appointment or reservation. I told her no, I was, I was told I could just walk in. <laughs> and the look on this person's, this woman's face was like, ah, stupid Americans. <laughs> Always going through the process, not learning the language, not knowing how the things go. But she didn't kick me out. So she just asked me very sternly to take a seat. And so I went over, I waited maybe about another five, 10 minutes and she called me up and she said, everything's done and I thanked her and then we took the bus back back uh, to Coronado I love the transit here uh, taking the bus five bucks each way for a I mean solid hour plus ride is pretty slick I mean these guys know how to drive in traffic and I'd call them definitely professional drivers I uh, while I'm going through this driver's license process I'm not even sure if I want to drive so that was the, the process that we went through for that section um, when we got home, I scheduled an appointment in Pananome to go to the Centrozen, and that's where I can actually get my real driver's license. And luckily, that place is open on Saturdays. So that way, I don't have to take off work or anything like that. So um, we scheduled an appointment. Got up in the morning and had breakfast, and then we drove down to the Centrozen place. And there was already a line there. Um, it was, that was probably 20 minutes early for my appointment, 15, 20 maybe. But there was already a line. I'm sure other people have appointments and stuff. So I, I got in line. And then this woman came out with a little notepad and started talking to people as she walked towards the end of the line where I was. I luckily caught that she was asking the people in line if they had an appointment. So I told her, yep, I have an appointment. And she grabbed me out of the line and hooked me right inside so uh, I assume the rest of those people didn't have an appointment and they're just gonna wait it out so she took me inside and had me sit on a chair I was probably there sit on that chair for maybe 15 minutes and then uh, they had I think two countertops where they're actually processing stuff so the gentleman asked me to come up and and I so I, I went up to that to that countertop and gave him my information he gave me a sheet of paper. I filled that one out. Um, <laughs> he he uh, gave me a vision test. So in the vision test here, I don't, I don't remember where they are in the States. There's like a small C and there's like eight, uh, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight, eight different directions it could possibly face. So when you see it, you just select the direction. So I passed that test. Um, and then they took me in for a hearing test and I passed that test. And then the communication barrier <laughs> broke. Uh, I was able to pick out what he was saying with my very limited Spanish while we were sitting at the thing, but when he was when it came to payment, I didn't actually understand where where we were at first. So I handed, whipped out the trusty Google Translate, and as it turned out, he said that they didn't have a cash box today. 
there would have to be some form of electronic payment. Um, so my guess is, you know, we scheduled it on a Saturday. I think I mentioned that uh, to avoid getting off work. I'm, I'm wondering if Monday through Friday they probably have someone that processes cash, um, but maybe you know they don't work on the weekend. That's my only guess. It was forty bucks. It's forty bucks to do it, but uh, I didn't have the the Panamanian um, bank account app on my phone, so I was able to go. I mean, it's supposed to uh, has the. I, Write it. I wrote it down in English, and he said, and I said, I'll be right back. Went out to the uh, car, snatched Tiff, and brought her back in, and got past that. And got, went back and sat down for a little bit, and I was called up to another smaller countertop, or counter. Um, and what did I give her? I'm not sure if I even gave her anything. But she ended up just kicking me my license, and then that was the process of getting my driver's license. I feel like I got freedom. If I choose to use it, um, you know, there were there were a couple times where Tiff was out on a hike and she had the, you know, the car was at home. I got off work and I kind of wanted to go do something, maybe go just cruise down somewhere, somewhere further than taking the golf cart. So at least now I do have that freedom or choice if I if I want to jump in the car or and and go somewhere. So I really, it's kind of nice. I don't know. It's it's, it's almost like when you're. Well, at least in South Dakota, when you turn 14 to get your driver's license, you feel like you got this independence. <laughs> kind of feel like I got that in Panama now, and I'm just as scared to drive now as I was then. Hey, welcome back. Um, so that this is going to be quite a long video. Uh, so uh, Gil pretty much explained everything with the searches in. So I'm not going to go into any detail any more detail about that, um, I'm going to just include the links below the, for the search in, the, um, the U.S. Embassy, and the um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, also known as the Tribunal Electoral. So that is the process of going through the, the easy way to get your driver's license. Now I don't have to drive everywhere, and Gail can drive too.